the building. We're going to track them down. Uh, we're in the process of doing that right now. Uh, Oh, they are on the way. Awesome. Well, uh, the person I sent will may I find them, and here they are. So this room is called what? TC301. TC301, okay. We gotta let them know up at the booth because there was some confusion as to locations. Uh, TCC301. All right then. Ooh. Oh. Hey look, there's a pad of paper, written notes, there's candy. There's an audience. I am, but there's no chocolate. No, they why? never put good stuff. Why can they put hotel candy? Why can they put chocolate? Because it's hotel candy. But chocolate hotels have no, candy. No, they put the fruit stuff that lasts forever. This is stuff that you find in your grandmother's closet. After my grandmother's dead. It. Thanks for bringing that up. That's exactly what I'm saying. When my grandmother died, we found this like petrified candy. What? Uh, yeah, thank you. Right. So, <laughs> now that I'm done fucking around, no one here is young, right? <laughs> all right. Should, should, should we have made this an 18-plus Yeah, band? I know. Yeah. It's early. So thank you all for coming. Um, today we are talking about... 10 years. 10 years. 10 years of Blind Ferret. 10, 10 years of Least I Could Do. 7 years of LFG. 4 years of Gutters. gutters. What else How did we do? years of Bears? 2 four. years. That's not as impressive. No, it's it's like, four, 4 years of Bears. No, it's not 4 years. Bears like, is 4 years old. It's not 4 years old. It's like 3 years old. He's 4. His, it was his fourth birthday this year. No, oh, the, my kid. That's what four. I'm talking about. I thought you were talking about the book. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, but the book essentially started with your kid. Yeah, yeah, but like, he had to like, grow a personality first. So it wasn't like when he was, like, I only started writing when he was like one, when he was interesting. Okay, fine. If any of you have kids, you know what I'm saying, right? Babies are boring. Yeah. Yeah, babies suck. They're meat tubes for they're, the first one. They're while. nothing. I have, uh, we just had twins, and uh, my sperm is that crazy. Um, <laughs> And they're 10 months old, and they just started getting like somewhat fun because they can like react to you somewhat and kind of know who you are. But the first six months suck. Yeah. So I guess don't have kids <laughs> is what I'm saying. I'm just kidding. They're my joy. Really, just just to adopt somebody with their own apartment already and have them over for dinner occasionally. Just, honestly, just get a cat. <laughs> Shorter lifespans, less expensive. What else? What, uh, cool yeah. sandpaper tongues. Yeah. They're adorable. That's a weird thing to say. Huh. Yeah, you trained. know, you do a laser pointer in front of a six-month-old, nothing. <laughs> a cat there, it's the best goddamn thing in the world, so. So, ten, <laughs> ten years. So, I'm not really sure what you guys want us to talk about, so we can just kind of do whatever. Um, because, obviously, we've been doing this for a decade, apparently. A little yeah. over. This has been my full-time job, actually, for ten years. So, that's pretty crazy to think about. Um, Blind Ferret now employs about 25 full-time employees. We're based in Montreal, which is in Canada. I don't know if you guys know where that is. It's like up. <laughs> up and cold. That's, yeah. that's where Canada is. And uh, yeah, we've, uh, we like what we do. And uh, so we could do Q&A. We could just randomly talk shit. I can tell you more about my kids. That's always fascinating. I can tell you about my cats, which is not fascinating. Yeah. No, okay. Let's do a Q&A. Let's do that. That cool? All right. Who has a question? I have a question. No, no. Yeah, yes. I think you should talk about what inspired you to do Least I Could Do. Why did you decide to be a full-time writer versus a full-time whatever you're doing? That's a hard question. Pass. <laughs> It'll get us through to the first real question. All right. Fine, fine. I decided to become a writer because I always wanted to be a writer. Um, I just didn't know it. And I wanted to see if I could write a comic strip, because I love, there's, no matter what else I do, what else I write, comic strip is my number one love. I love it. I love the medium. I love everything about it. I love four panels. I love, I just love it. Um, I love it. And 
I wanted to see if I could do it. And uh, 10 years later, I guess I can. Not well, mind you, but well enough. We keep reminiscing about the same things every con. It's sort of like, remember when you used to worry if you'd have 100 strips in you or 1,000 strips in you? I just wrote, and now we're like. I, I just wrote, at least I could do number 3,456. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. I think he's got it. Yeah. We had, well, it was that. that. It was 750 pages of LFG. Yeah. Um, 300 beginnings. How many bears? Oh, look, you scared people away by your cat talk. Well, well, whatever. Yeah. So who has a question? Let's do this. I'm ready. Yes, sir. Uh, so what was your inspiration for Rain besides kind of your college years? Ha, huh, joke's on you. I didn't go to college. <laughs> <laughs> Rain was just this, uh, you ever like, there's so much shit on a daily basis that we, you, you just want to say and you want to do and you can't, right? Because social conformity <laughs> and I guess morals. Um, so I just, there's so many things that I, in, in situations that you want to say or do and, you know, certain, for certain reasons you can't. Rain can. There's nothing that he can or won't do. If he wants to do, he's a, he's a very selfish individual. So if there's something that he wants to do, he's just going to do it. So. It's everything that you've ever wanted to do and say. That's Rain. Um, he's, he's aging now, so that's kind of, he's becoming a little more aware of the world around him. The problem became is like six or seven years into it, you know, I got married, um, I have kids, I bought a house, like shit changes, right? So like, I go to sleep at like 10 o'clock at night now, so I can't really talk about, That's you know. the funny, the week, 10 years ago, I was the stay-at-home dad. So I was getting up at 6, 7 a.m. to get the kids out the door or whatever. And you were updating I was, strip at 2 a.m. Yeah, because I was, like, every night, I was, yeah. I was young. But I was, now, my kids are grown. They can get their own goddamn breakfast and everything. So I go to, my, my, my schedule switched back, so I go to bed at 1 a.m. And I get emails from him at 7 o'clock when he's in the office. Yeah. Going, why aren't you awake yet? Because I went to bed at 1. I got up at 9 now, you know, or 10. Yeah, you lazy. Old and lazy. But yes, that's who Rain is. Next question. Pause. How old do you think I am? <laughs> Holy yeah. shit. Nailed it. 35. My turn. How old? 70. <laughs> Who said that? I don't know. <laughs> you, are, I, you are timeless like Gandalf. I turned 50 this year. And that's been kind of the weird thing because I am older than everybody else at Blind Ferret. Yeah. And so occasionally my references are just met with blank stares. And I'm just kind of going, who raised you? Well, yeah, he's, he's like, when I was around when they, you know, invented fire, it was crazy. So, yeah, Lara's old. Point final. <laughs> my, my, my second part of that question is, what did you do before him? Because 10 years isn't long enough to... I was an amateur porn star. <laughs> what, 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 why would you laugh? That wasn't funny. <laughs> oh, yeah. She's, yeah, it was. She's seen the tapes. Yeah. It's funny. It's like, oh, those are really short tapes. <laughs> What do you do? Yeah. So more porn tapes. Uh, three minutes of sex and 57 minutes of me crying in the corner. I'm sorry. This never happens. Um, it's funny because it's kind of true. Um, no, I, um, I was a <laughs> business management consultant. Um, I started when I was about, I sold my first company when I was 17 years old in my parents' basement. And then I got into consulting. I was in the video game industry. Right before I left to do Blind Fair full time, I was running um, an immigration law firm in Montreal. Um, they hired me as a, a consultation, and I, they ended up just offering me more and more money until I would stay. So I stayed for two years, and then at the end of that, I'm like, you know what? I have enough to live for three years. I'm going to give this a go. So I had three years. So I had three years to make Blind Fair work. If it didn't, I would go back, and if not, here I am. And Lara was the porn star. <laughs> I was already doing freelance illustration and professional caricature, so it wasn't that big a deal for, I mean, when, I think it was um, when LFG took off that I had to make it a, a decision to stop doing other work because of the time constraints. Oh, that's true, eh? yeah. it wasn't LFG, yeah. When it was doing least I could do, I had time to do other things, and then LFG came along and it was like, we got to do this. And I was already committed to, to Blind Ferret, so it wasn't that hard a decision to say, I guess I'm just doing Blind Ferret now. And now we own him. I'm just kidding. He's a person and slavery is wrong. Next question. 
You in the green shirt. Uh, where's the name from? Blind Ferret? Do you want the real answer? I was drunk. Uh, Randy and I were, were crazy drunk and young and stupid, and we just we thought it would be funny to take an animal and an adjective. So we just kind of, it was all, we also had a mad monkey. There was just weird things. Yeah. And in the morning when we sobered up, Blind Ferret stuck. Um, so yeah. There was also, which ones had, I think there was another mad monkey. I think there was, there yeah. were a couple that were like already taken, but they had a list. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, it was that, that was a weird night. Many, many things went down. <laughs> I killed my first prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Unless you, next question. So I got a question. Something I've seen happen in uh, at least I can do a lot um, is you'll suddenly bring something back out of the blue. Like you thought it was a one off joke. Yeah. Yeah, I plan that a lot. The thing about the least I could do is you, you can plant these like small seeds here and there and then like there's n no timeline. Like I never said in two years I'm going to do this or in three years I'm going to do this. I just knew that eventually we were going to get to that point. Um, so I want to have that. It's kind of like an ace in the hole, right? Whenever you're ready, you just pull it out. So there's a lot of, if you go back, there's a lot of small things that you're going to see coming up or things that already happened. So yeah, it's, uh, it's fun to do. No, I did not. She just ended up being this crazy fun character. I knew there, there was going to be, because it's, it's easy to say that this character is never going to settle down. and We don't know what's going to happen with uh, him and Julie. But she's a fun character and she holds her own. And she, you're going to find she has her own issues as well, right? Because he's obviously, he's a boy child. You know, he's got crazy issues. He doesn't want to grow up. He's fighting it. But he is, you know, he's past 30 now. He is getting older and it, it is happening. Um, and then you have, you have Julie who is this crazy wealthy and crazy strong personality who is also an extreme sports enthusiast. So there's a lot of... And has wild bill for a dad. Yeah, so there's, <laughs> there's going to be this, this great thing soon when Rain goes there for dinner. So that's going to be fun because I love, I love Bill. And that just kind of happened. You know, so it's very organic. So I, I know I've done a good job on a one... Not talking about Julie, but I know I've done a good job on a one-off cookie cutter gal for, for a gag. If the next day, he's written a strip where they sleep together. It's like, ah, dude. Way to go. Pat, pat. Thank you. <laughs> no, but I knew I did a good job on Julie when... Yeah, she's great. Yeah. We like her. I next mean, question on A. Boom in the front. Why put Richard and Kale together in LFG? As far as when everything, the war ended, the split, and everybody went their separate ways, to put Richard and Kale on the island together. Why did that Richard and Kale, they, they're, they, they're the heart of the story. Richard and yeah. Kale will always be, because the whole thing about L LFG that we always try and show is there is no black and white. There is no, so you have these two guys who are, for all intents and purposes, black and white. Um, evil, good. So the trick is to bring them together so they can both discover there is a middle and where that middle is and how it defines everything else. So their kind of, you know, their bond and their story is everything. And you're going to see over the next, well, we're, we're seven years in? Yeah. Yeah, so the next eight years is going to be cool. Because <laughs> we have, I have this like 15 year arc that is the first generation of LFG. The thing, when we started, we, we brainstormed a bit and it was like a five year arc. At some point, it became a 15-year arc, so I don't really know what's coming much more than you guys at yeah, times. It, it's, it's pretty much, we're, I'm not sure how much longer he has, so it's just a matter of, you know, you know, let's be honest, you know, you're 50, you don't eat great. I'm going to ha haunt the fuck out of you. No, I, I know. I'm going to, man, when I replace you, oh, that's going to be funny. I'm just going to get like this a girl, a hot girl, I'm going to call her Lar. <laughs> But my name is, it doesn't matter. You're Lara I now. don't want to wear the fez. Wear the fez! <laughs> Give her like hormones so she grows a beard. <laughs> That's just mean. Yeah. Next question. Uh, you know, over the past 10 years, you've actually changed artists on these like a few a couple of times. Uh, what were those relationships like? Why did you part ways? And then for Lara, uh, how did you team up with... Uh, so... Lar was the Lar was the first artist I ever met and worked with. So Lar is, yeah. you know, 
he's the only one I ever wanted to work with. Um, when I wanted to Got do, lucky. yeah, when I wanted to do least I could do, I offered it to Lara, and he was just, you know, he had other clients and other things going on, so he just didn't have the time. Um, so first I found this. Um, first there was, was Trevor. It? No, before Trevor, what? Mark. Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, yeah, there's the untold story of Marcus, where if, if you get the if you get the blanc et noir, noir blanc, noir blanc, racist. If you get the black and white book, there's a little paragraph right in the very back about Marcus. Yeah. So Marcus, he, I did, I think, three strips with him. Only one got published. Yeah, because it was like, oh, this is bad. I'm no art expert, but this is shit. Um, so then I met Trevor. Um, I met him. How did I meet I have no idea, because yeah, I, I never don't. met Trevor in yeah. person. Yeah. Trevor was this, a very odd guy who, every time I spoke to him, had a different story about who he was and what he did. And, it was just, he had a sister one day, the one day he didn't, and then he came from a large family. The one, it just... He was like a college kid or I something. Don't I don't know. I, I think he was on a shit ton of drugs, to be honest. Um, eventually, I just, I'm like, I'm like, I was enjoying doing the least I could do, so I said, you know what? It's time to move on. I again offered it to Lar. Um, Lar again said, no. That's how he talks. And... Um, I do not. <laughs> My cat's breath smells like cat food. Um, <laughs> and then, um, so then um, we met Chad. Um, yeah, a Chad, Chad was, is a friend of mine. Yeah. And since I couldn't do it at the time, I offered it, I, or I introduced Chad to Somer because you were in the middle of auditioning or sending out yeah. inquiries for people. And that seemed to work out. Yeah, Chad, like, we, Chad and I had a good two-year run. And then at the end of that run, what happened was is Blind Ferret started to become like a real thing. Um, and Chad wasn't prepared to make the leap into full-time cartooning. And you know, he had his own thing going yeah. on. So he, he, had, you know, he had the security of a day job. Um, and even though he groused about it, uh, he wasn't willing to yeah. take the risk to become a full-time artist. So it was, you know, so we parted ways then, and it was very, it was, you know, Chad and I are still buddies. It's, that was a good breakup. But my, uh, one, my uh, one and only good breakup. About two weeks into Chad's run, though, I began regretting my decision to not take over least I could do. So then I, then, when Chad was leaving, I offered to Laura, and finally the old man said yes. And here we are. It was kind of funny, because I think the first book... Uh, the first volume of Chad, he dedicated it to me and said, I'll get it over his dead body. So when I took over, everyone's like, oh my God, is Chad okay? <laughs> but he, he is okay, and that's what's important. Yes, he's okay. Next question. Come on, give me something good. All right, go. Can we expect to see the continued adventures of Brahman in the future? <laughs> here's, here's a problem with Brahman, right? It doesn't... Um, it's a very unique audience, I found. <laughs> it's, it's fun to do. But we do have the second, you know, he told the first part of that story to yeah, well, David I'll, Logan. Yeah, it's, it's, Brahman just gets so filthy so quickly. The first time I saw him, he became my avatar on every damn site I'm online. Yeah, it's, it just, like, he's great, he's fun, but he gets filthy very quickly, so. Who has their phone on? Do you want me to answer it? Week. <laughs> Hi, mom. Um, so yeah, we. I. I do want to pick Brahman up eventually. I'm just not sure when because I have. Like, I pretty much have the next year kind of plotted out and which arcs we're gonna do, and I don't really have room for that. Um, so I, we will get to it eventually. Next question. There's. There is, like, th there are certain qualities that kind of bind them. And when I started writing Richard for the first time, it kind of was an extension of Rain. It was kind of like, if Rain was playing an MMO, what kind of character would he play? And so it, it kind of went that way. And then Richard, Richard kind of develops his own, pers it's, it's, it sounds weird, right? Because everyone's like, oh, it happens organically. But it really does. Like, these guys, I don't write dialogue for character. Hey, my phone's going off. <laughs> Do you want me to answer it? Who's Erico 212? That's New York. Let's call me from New York. Don't answer it. We're in a panel. But what if, what if it's like important from New York? What if it's like the mayor? Of New York? Yeah, and this is my time. Well, fuck it. Now the mayor's fucked. Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. <laughs> um, where was I? Uh, MMO. Yes. 
Um, and then, so it, it really does happen like, I don't write dialogue for these characters anymore. I just, pretty much what we do is I give them situations and they, they just tell me what they're gonna say. You know, it's like what would Rain do in this situation? What would Richard do? What would Kale do? So kind of, you know, there's, but yeah, there definitely was. I think they share a, an appetite but one is, you know, Rain's motivations for that appetite are different than Richard's, but they have that kind of yeah. voraciousness. They're, they're, they're very selfish, that very get bored easy, have to fill their days with something, you know? Next question. Boom. Uh, what happens, uh, uh, um, we are shopping that thing around like fuckers right now. It's, it's, it is such a pain in the ass thing to do, I can't even tell you. Um, we, find, we, we have it, it's done. Everyone, if you guys are back to Kickstarter, you've all seen it. Um, it will eventually, once we're done selling it, it will go up to everyone else. Um, and we're just, you know, it just, it's such a long process. Um, really what I really want to do is, this, the craziest thing about shopping this pilot around is the thing that we hear the most is, we love this thing to do. We just wish you had more of a, a fantasy parody type of <laughs> property. Oh, so you assholes me looking for group? Is that what you want? They're like, hey, that's great. Do you have a pilot for that? Oh. So we're trying to rework, because now everybody wants looking for groups. So it's a very, it's really strange. So I'm, I might go back and do a, a LFG pilot. Um, we'll see what happens there. But right now we just added a shit ton of LFG content, so we're kind of rebuilding that world. And uh, so yeah, so. Is everyone enjoying MPC and, and Tiny Dick Adventures? That was like the weakest fucking yes ever. Are you enjoying it? Yes. Thank you. Then we will keep doing it with that level of energy. I am, <laughs> I am my own worst enemy when he pitches ideas to me. Like he pitches an idea to me after he had Hawk lined up. Because I can't say no to Hawk. <laughs> Absolutely love Hawk's work. But it's like, well, I want to do it. He's like, you have no time and you're old. I know, but I want to do it. That's so, actually exactly, well, that's pretty exactly much what I said. In the Sobeys when I'm shopping, because that's when I got the call. I'm standing in the peas and rice aisle going, but I want to do it. Um, Could you age yourself any more? Like, seriously, peas and rice? What the fuck are you eating? No, that's just, I pulled into an empty aisle to talk to you because you called when I was oh, shopping. Oh, so you weren't like shopping for peas and rice? No. Because that's a shitty meal. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with peas and rice. You, like together? Well, on the side. That's not, no. Rice is not a side dish. Rice is an under dish. You put stuff, no, you put rice, you put things under. No. You over rice. They put rice under on Food Network. Everybody else just puts it on the side. Well, they're all wrong. I've been eating rice longer than you've been alive. I think I know how to do rice. <laughs> I got applause for her rice. That, that you, you clap for, but how do you Rice burn! <laughs> Hashtag rice burn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute that you're laughing at him. <laughs> I'm going to bring up my age more often. That gets applause. Yeah, eat it. Yes. Was Issa always off limits? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, it, it never, here's the thing. Every like, every fucking trope is always like, he ends up with his best friend. They never, I was never going to do that. Because sure. it's stupid. Because that doesn't happen in real life. Was You're, there any, like, where was their backstory started? Did they go to high school together? They went, they were like, uh, they, she's been in, uh, at least like do beginnings. Yeah. Yeah, so they've, way back. yeah, way back. So, there's the old friends, and like I have friends that are girls that are like, you don't end up with every girlfriend, you know, it's, it's I, I you hate know that trope. I, I just want to, because people bring up, people who don't like Least I Could Do, what bring up, what do they like it? Bring up the sexism of it. What's their problem? That's what I'm saying. They're, are they racist? Against, yeah, probably. Against white people? No, but because they're, they're like, they think Rain is a one note character. But the thing is that the women, I mean, yes, there's, the, the cookie cutter bar pickups or whatever in some of the strips and, and things like that. But the women who last in the strip, like Issa, like Julie, like Nancy, like Marcy, they're strong women characters. They're not cookie cutter characters. Like, props to Somer, he writes women well, I think. Which um, is weird, because I know nothing about them. I know, but like, like the fact that he gets shot down. I mean, he's about quantity, not quality. So. You know, we see his successes and we see his failures. But the women who last, I mean, he's not sleeping with Marcy. He's not sleeping with Nancy. He's not sleeping with Issa. You know, like, there, there are strong women, balanced characters through the strip. So to answer your question, I write good. He writes good. <laughs> That's why I wanted to work with him. Aw, stop it. Louder. Next question. <laughs> what, what 
the only reason that Richard's name is Richard is for that one dick joke. <laughs> I shit you not. That's really why I named it Richard. Um, so we were doing MPC and we were doing, so we were updating Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I'm like, oh, we just need one more thing. Just to fill up the week, you know? Just to give you guys, you know, you can start your day every day and you have something on LFG.com. And um, I'm like, let's do something like just weird. Weird and stupid that's non-canon, that's just fucking stupid. Dick. <laughs> well, thank you. See, enthusiasm, I like that. Next question. Yes. That, that's what MPC is for. Yeah. For the side characters. Oh. I, it's, it's funny because LFG to me is a lot more world building than, because you already know least like dude's world. You, are, you know everything about it. You, you know the basic rules. You know where they live. You, like, you know it. It's our world, but just upped, you know? Whereas LFG, I find LFG needs more of the background. Um, there's also, there's so many LFG characters. I would love to do more least I could do at some point, but apparently my kids want to see me every now and then, so I'm trying to balance that out. They do want to see me. I don't know why you guys are surprised. <laughs> Next question. Nee, nee. Yes. I, my, my days are usually like half, half writing, half blind ferret shit. So I usually write in the mornings. And then after lunch I do like, you know, there's the rest of the company. So I do like uh, IT shit and I see what's going on there and I do all my meetings and all my calls and the non-fun stuff. If I could, I would just write all day. Like I would. But I'm, I'm writing for a good like five, six hours a day now. I go from like seven in the morning to like one usually. Then mm -hmm. I have lunch. Yep. <laughs> Next question? Yes. Tell everybody about your oh, origami for the panel. Org so yeah, the uh, Elder's Origami panel. Um, I had, I was going to actually see at the panel who had been before, because last year we did the penis and the boobs and the fat fucks, I believe. And I often do those three, two years in a row at a, at a con the first time I've done them. Um, and, but I actually forgot the origami book that had some other options in it. So I'm seeing if I can get those, some of the pages copied and sent to me, my daughter at home. But otherwise, um, I'll play, I'll, we, we might be doing the dick and the boobs again. But it will depend on the audience. If, if a majority of people have already done it, then if I get the images then we'll probably do a couple of them. That was a long-winded okay. answer for we'll what probably, the panel is. I'm, I'm avoiding saying, okay, we're probably going to do the cunning lingus, uh, the glimpse of paradise, and possibly the tradesman's entrance. He takes paper and he makes it dirty. Yes, it's yeah. adult origami. It is not cranes and butterflies. It's dicks and tits. <laughs> you know what you should do? A crane and a butterfly having sex. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Copyright, Blind Fair Entertainment. Let's do a dick with wings. Uh, we'll call it a flying fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You should write. Just kidding. Next question. Hey, yes. Is Richard going to turn back into human? Was he always human? Are you going to explore that more? Because there was a couple of issues where it's... Spoilers. Oh, yeah. So the entire plot line to LFG is... Nah, I'm not going to tell you shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's, uh, it gets interesting. Rich, there's a lot more to Richard than we've alluded to, and there's a lot more you're gonna see. But uh, there's some really, there's some fun stuff coming. There's, there's, yeah, he's a fun character. Next question, please. Don't be shy, ask whatever you've ever wanted to know. Make it weird. <laughs> you're gonna make it weird, aren't you? Go. When I, when I first started writing Least I Could Do, the biggest thing that I was ever told was write what you know. You know so I write what I, I can relate to. Because at the end of the day, Lar draws for himself and I write for me, right? We write what and draw what we think we like. So the hope is that you guys will share our likes and our dislikes. 
Um, that's the entire basis for building an audience, you know? So if I don't write what I know, I'm going to grow out of, like, I'm not going to understand my own character. So I wanted Rain to suffer like me, because really, fuck him. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I went through the same thing. And it's also, it's a way to express what's going on in my, in my own life and, you know, as I get older and what happens and, you know, when I'm in these weird situations, like when I'm in the hospital because I'm having heart issues, and I'm like, I'm in a lot of pain, but this is also kind of funny, <laughs> you know? So it's always, it's a great way to kind of take what I see and just be a sponge and take everything in and just put it out there, you know? So yes. Next question. Nene, nene. Come on. Yes. What made you decide to quit a job that, you know, was making good money for you and say, fuck it, I'm going to write? More than anything else you do in life, more, than, more time than you sleep, more time than you spend with your family, do you know where you are? You're at work. So if you don't love what you do, what the fuck's the point? Like, you have to, I love, and it sounds cheesy and it sounds corny and it's, I'm sure what every other creator will say, but I love my job, man. I love going to work every morning. I love getting in the car and I listen to F Fox News. I love it. It's the greatest piece of satire on TV. Um, I love it. I, and it's, it's part of my day and I go to work and I write and it's fun and it's stupid and it's just, I love it. So that's why I was young, I wasn't married, I didn't have a mortgage. I was able to take that risk, you know, and I didn't take a salary for three years. And I took it. And you know what? If I had failed, at least I tried. Next question. Yes. Yeah. You're at, you're at a Comic Con. I think you're safe. <laughs> You're the first one to ever figure that out. That's very philosophical. I always yeah. thought it was like that. You ever take like a like a, a 101 philosophy and they do the, the candle flame? Didn't go to college. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Philosophy is when they think about shit. Ah, old man. Yeah. Um, you are gonna. I, I will give you a little treat. You are gonna see the like in the future the other riches go back and meet us. So there, you are gonna see that ex explore more. That was a seed for later. Good will question. Be on the plane of suck because that was awesome to not draw backgrounds. I know he was like so happy. <laughs> I keep saying we're going to a con. Can we have a plane of suck episode? <laughs> so I can just bump. like no, draw a dragon and on that dragon this we'll have so seventeen heads. Each head will have different features. Each head will have seven gems. Each gem will have 37 facets. Each the, facet the, the will tell I a story. The page, he goes, where is it? It's like, they're behind the tree. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's true. Next question. Yes. Yes, there is. You're going to see. Mean it. I'm looking. If there's anyone, yes. It's hard to see because there's a giant light in my face. <laughs> What's my what? Yeah. Lar, little known story. Lar used to be on Broadway. Yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm not fucking around. He asked you, you used to play Peter Pan. I can't even do it with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. I, we, Lauren and I love musical theater. This we is love, fun. yeah, it's, so this it's just fun, fun and it's stupid to do, you know? Yeah. But we love doing like those big set pieces like that. I love doing it. Like, I'm really, I think before you'll we You'll be swell, you'll be great. Sorry, Ethel Merman suddenly channeled through me. Oh, Ethel <laughs> Merman, that's cute. Um, <laughs> yeah. We, um, because we, we did, um, we just thought of the world, we did This Is War. I'm actually writing right now a parody song to uh, Let It Go from Frozen. So it's, it's, so, it's probably my stupidest work yet. <laughs> so, um, so if I finish that, I'll get it recorded, and I think we're just going to animate this shit out of that because uh, it's been a, a good year, so we have some fun money lying around. So I think we're going to uh, just do that for you guys because, you know, you guys keep me in Schecter's. Schecter's organic energy, delicious. Yes.
how, how old are the kids? You weren't there. Plus, just if she ever asked, you'd be like, yeah, that song? It was from, uh, what's that company called? Penny Arcade? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to get sued again. I'm, I'm very tired of lawsuits. Um, yeah. We, I, I actually get that a lot. The problem is, I can't even sing the original um, Part of Your World version anymore. I'm like, I don't remember the lyrics. Yeah. I'm like, great, I've destroyed a classic. That, that's the thing, right? It, just, it gets in your brain and that's it. Like, when I finish Let It Go, you guys, I'm going to ruin that song for you guys forever. So, you're welcome. Do you have it written yet? I'm working on it right now. Can you sing part of it? Fucking no. <laughs> <laughs> I recently hu hit puberty, so my voice is not what it should be. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm so old. The question, come on. Go. So, occasionally, I will use this rupee, it is that, and now he's gone. Is there ever going to be something similar to where LFG becomes one of his hallucinations? You know what? When we originally started LFG, we actually thought about doing some kind of crossover, but I, I don't like cross pollinating. I really like keeping them like really kind of separate, you know, and like really just keeping them as their own world and their own things. And there are know. a couple Richard appearances, though. Yeah. We did Crisis on Infinite Web Comics. Yeah. He's in the background, and in one of the convention strips, yeah. I put a vague reference of, of cosplayers back there, but that's about it. I just, I don't want, I, I never want to allude, like, to give you guys any idea that the two worlds are in any way connected, you know? So I just want to make sure that they're completely separate, you know? And I, I try and do that with all of our properties, so. Well, like you said, if you were playing an MMO at all, that would be scary. Yeah, you know, but. <laughs> I really, I, I like keeping them separate. Um, makes it easier for me to keep track of the stories. <laughs> yes. What's that? The bear. Oh, the bear. I thought I said blind ferret. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna keep that going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, everything I do um, is pretty much through blind ferret, except there's like a few like side things I do, like the, for example, the LFG novel that I'm currently writing for 47 North. That's like an aside, but it's still like blind ferret. It's still like the same kind of thing, but I'm, you know, I own blind ferret, so it's not coming out. It's, it's being published with 47 North, yeah, not with exactly. Blind ferret, yeah. So, but that, that's just because I want to work with Amazon, so. Um, but yeah, we're, Becky and I are working on volume three for the bear. The problem is, right, is I wrote this, this, this book called The Bear, and I, I love my kid to death. But then I had two more kids, and then they're going to get older, and they're going to be like, hey, where the fuck is my book? <laughs> so I'm going to be like, sorry, I just love your brother more. Like, I don't know what to do at this point, you know? Like, I'm, I'm choosing a favor, and I'm staking it. So I guess, you know, we'll see. But yeah. Next question. You know, I, I, we thought about doing it. The, the problem was is we still did raise 250 Gs for it. So we, it, 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 we didn't raise pocket change, you know. It was a good amount. The problem is I'm, I'm always of the mindset where go big or go home, you know. Like do it the way you want it to do. Don't compromise. If you can't do it that way, move on to something else. So I would one day like to go back to that and try it again. But I don't want to change the scope of it at all because I, I fucking love what we were doing. Um, like for example, when you know, for the LFG movie, for example, now we're gonna try more of a series. So I'm gonna go that direction instead. So if we do, if we do end up doing the game, it'll be like maybe three years down the road. I'm not in any rush to do. Yeah, it. it's too soon to try it again. Yeah. After that. Yeah, we're we're on hiatus from uh, Kickstarter for a while. I'm all like, I think it's getting fed up with it. Yes. Disney actually, funny enough, and I, I did not expect this at all. Disney are great sports. Um, I was, uh, yeah, no one, no one was more surprised than me. The guy who, um, Dave Mitchell, yeah, voice of Richard, got work with Disney after doing 
they part of the world. they heard it, they loved what he did, and they actually yeah. so he was in. So they mentioned who's who's playing Titanfall. Nobody. Yeah. So one one of the voices, if you listen very carefully, Richard is in Titanfall. <laughs> the guy who Dave Mitchell is in Titanfall. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to tell you who because I don't want to ruin it for you. But he's there a lot. And it really fucks me up when I'm playing that stupid game. I'm like, oh, Richard, you're not helpful at all. <laughs> I'm still bad at this game. Next question. Uh, you just mentioned you're, you're working on novels that maybe the answers it a bit, but do you, not to say that writing is easy, in fact, it's very hard, but do you find that there's a problem with pacing? It sounds like you have a lot of ideas and hearing stuff like, oh, yeah, this thing I did here is going to come up here. Yeah. But we're talking like, that could be like a year from now. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I write everything down in a note. I write, I, so I have, I have like my basic, kind of like a flow chart in a way where, you know, you, you start A and then the characters split off and they get back together and, and this is like the main thing. It's like I always say, I have A and I have C, B is up for grabs. So we kind of figure that out as we go along. But I have like the really big points all laid out. So sometimes, yeah, it's a little frustrating because we're only doing two LG pages a week, you know? So I would, I would love to do more. Um, but it's I'd like to remind you I'm old. Yeah, I know, I know. So I don't want to kill the guy yet. So we're just kind of, you know, that's how I deal with it over time. So it's all kind of spread out. Next question. Oh, I can't even see your hand. Go. Uh, speaking of the bear, um, do you have, like, uh, Chris, Chris Dale, like, specific We have it online. I, we might have some here. I'm not sure because I had nothing to do with the packing of it. Um, you'll have to come by the booth and check because I, yeah, 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 we have. We did, I, I chose my five favorite from each book and we did prints of those. Um, we also have um, the bear blankets which are super cute and really fuzzy oh my and gosh. cute. And, I'm, and there's a couple new uh, onesies and a toddler shirt yeah. that are bear. Yeah. The, the funny thing about um, uh, the bear blankets though is one in three of them have semen on them. The ones that do will surprise you. I'm just kidding. You guys get that, right? <laughs> They're like, oh, don't use a black light. <clears throat> you didn't say it was your semen. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> it's horse semen. Why do I go to horses? I right away know. to horses. Next question. Yes. So it kind of goes back to the, the writing. So do you have an ending in mind for each script already? Or is it kind of like you have A, C, and then Z is going to be way down there? So, LFG, yes. Uh, least I could do um, will end when I die. I have, I wrote about four years ago, or maybe longer than that actually. Longer than that. I have. Although you update it. Right? Yeah, I have two weeks worth of scripts that are actually sitting at the bank in my safety deposit box. Um, when I die, those are going to go to, well, Lars is going to die way before me. So whoever is doing least, least I could do at that time. I'm outliving you. Yeah, will. That's like, that's impossible. It's statistically impossible if you don't live me. No. I'm in, good, look, look, I'm in good shape. You could get shot by an ex or something. Yeah, all right. <laughs> so then Lar will draw the last two weeks. But there is an ending for that strip because, you know, I hate when people die when you haven't finished the story. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> and, real... then, and then your kids can bring it back against your will. Yeah, I'm fucking kids. Um, so, yeah, so there is, there is an ending. We will, you know, there's two weeks to wrap things up kind of nice and tidy and, you know, hopefully you guys will appreciate it. Also, hopefully most of you will be dead before me. N no offense, right. but, you know. Wishing death upon our leadership. <laughs> That's really Hey, sweet. how's the blind fair panel? He wants us to die. <laughs> I don't know why. Next question. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Somebody You're wrong. Oh, you go. go ahead. Uh, you're from Canada, correct? Yes. The least I could do is set in a city. Okay. I, w I never really set. Funny story though. Because American politics are interesting. You ever read about Canadian politics? No. That's why. <laughs> Canadian politics are fucking, because Canadian politics, if any of you are from Canada, you'll understand what I'm saying. It's all about the status quo. We don't care what you do as long as you keep shit the same. You know, like, yeah. just, just don't ruffle any feathers, keep things the same, don't raise tax, just leave it the same, and we don't give a shit. 
So it's so boring. Whereas you guys, you guys have like, because even our conservative versus our left wing, we're all in the middle. <laughs> we're yeah, all so we're close to each central. other. Whereas you guys in the States are like polar opposite. It's crazy. There's such a, a wide gap between you. And it's, to me, that's like fascinating. And it's all like, it's so like geography based. Like I love when, you know, because during convention season, we travel all over the States. So we see like different, you know, I know exactly if I'm in a red state or blue state, I just go, do you like Obamacare? Or you don't like Obamacare. I can bam, figure you out, you know? But I was like just in uh, Florida on vacation. And everywhere I go, they're like, fuck Obamacare. I just asked for a sandwich. Like, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't afford insurance. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just, again, sandwich. <laughs> so it's, it's, that's why I, America to me is fascinating. So good on you guys for, you know, hate, I guess hating each other. <laughs> but yeah. Well, I mean, North Korea was fun. The North Korea story arc. Yeah, I love going. That was fun. North Korea. Because I'm like, what are they going to do to me? Like, really? Yeah. They, they, they shoot rockets into the sea. They're not going to hit Canada. I'm safe. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Is there a reason when you never went to the Ukraine? Because I know when something major happens, you'll intercede it like, immediately. The problem, I'm in a really good story arc right now, and I yeah. didn't want to split it up. Sure. That, that's my problem. But I, I, oh, five minutes? Okay. Yeah. Um, I really, I didn't want to interrupt the current arc, but this Ukraine thing is awesome because Russians are trying to be scary again. And I, I think that's awesome. But if you, actually, if you actually take the time and do your research, do you know that Russia has no economy? They have about 2% the size of the American economy. They have nothing. It's just like, hey, look at my big dick. Don't look at anything else, but look at my dick. That's what Russia is doing right now on a global scale, and I think that's awesome. You know, I, I love Putin. They, they take pictures of this guy shirtless on a tank. Like, like, come on, man. That's like, that's, ah. Uh, so I, I do want to go to the, the Ukraine. <laughs> I, just, I love the idea of, hey, uh, Crimea. We're going to, anyone want that? No? We're going <laughs> to, we're going to grab that. That's cool. It, it's, it's fascinating to me. And I just, you know, and now everyone's like posturing over it. So I love it. So you, what, what gets interesting though when things like that happen is, is my Google search image. I'm sure I've got an, an, an NSA file because, yeah. like, I was having to search, try to find images of North Korea. A really hard. There's like a couple of surreptitious YouTube, touristy kind of things, and I'm just like freeze framing things to get references. Do you ever, do you ever watch this on actually on YouTube? There's this tour that they give, um, the North Koreans give to tourists, the fake yeah. tourists, obviously. Um, they have an, an American sub that, I don't know where they got it, but they, they, take, the, they take the American, uh, like the tourists on it, and they make up this entire story about it, and it's awesome. Like, it's better than anything I can ever write. It's awesome, so. But yeah, I mean, I get, it, when we do things like that, and like, or when we, you, the, the Wall of China, you know, some of these, these places, like, I gotta find references, and I can't convince Randy to send me on a fact-finding trip, unfortunately. You wanna go to North Korea? No, but I, I might have gone to the... They would China. actually eat you. <laughs> Seriously, they'd be like, oh. I got oh. like a foot and a half on all of them. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, you know. I'll, They're I'll, easier to draw now than ever. They all have the same haircut. I know, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we have time for two more questions. Do you ever look forward to an increased Harry story arc, or is he just meant to be that candidate guy? It's just almost there. I, I might do it in the future. The problem is, is I have like certain arcs that we really want to do, mm -hmm. and somehow the years just keep passing, because I'm like, like certain arcs that I do now, I meant to do like two years ago, and I just like time, like, you know, we only do like 300 trips a year for at least like, it's hard to get so much in there, so I have to really pick and choose. I, I, I would like to, I guess is the answer. And one more question. Well, it was super hard. Um, I thought it'd be funny to have a gay reign. Gay. I, I thought that. I thought there. <laughs> that had, was. I've wanted an uh, a, an evil evil twin. Gay reign forever. I thought it'd be hilarious, and it was just finally. It was the timing was right, and it was. I just, you know, I I love the gay community, and I love like kind of like busting us uh, stereotypes and kind of like doing fun stuff like that. So I love that character, and we are going to see a lot more of them. Um, before we sign off, let me tell you, we are at booth 
1314. 1314. We have, come see us. We have lots of fun stuff. Lots of new, oh, great new merchandise this year because we got, we got Bear 2. We got just a few copies of the latest beginnings because they just came in. There's the bear blankets, the, the hats, the squishies. Laura will give you a blowjob. It's uh. awesome. Lots of new merch. Thank you all for coming. None of these candies look good. No. I think they're the same ones from every hotel. No. Ever. Week. Who do you think called me? Grandma coming this morning. Did you? Yeah.